So it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to this introduction to the EuroPCR Terumo Learning Edge collaboration. My name is Tom Johnson, based in Bristol in the UK. And for the last few years, I've been working with PCR and Terumo on simulation based learning to overcome complications in the cath lab. Now we have to recognize that complications occur and are device or procedurally related. But we as the interventional community clearly play a fundamental role in both hopefully avoidance, but then overcoming these complications. But we must also recognize that we are often you know, a cause for these complications. And so where possible need to uh, consider how we can alter practice uh, to minimize uh, the occurrence for our patients. Now, Japanese have done some good work recognizing uh, the different nature of device related complication with most commonly balloon, guide wire and stent being the devices likely uh, to relate to complication. In 42%, uh, the stent uh, being uh, the cause. Here's a case example of mine where a stent uh, got caught on the front edge of a guide extension catheter and was ultimately stripped from the balloon. Now, many will argue this is a thing of the past and stent loss just isn't relevant to my practice, but actually this case series, albeit now 10 years uh, uh, old, highlights that uh, stent loss occurs in you know, a, a significant proportion, varying in these multiple series from 0.2% to 8.4%. But I think most importantly, the association with a major adverse cardiac event rate of on average 17% means this is something important for us to recognize, attempt to avoid, but also understand how to overcome. Looking at temporal trends, we do see that there is a reduction in the incidence of this uh, complication, stent loss, but that the complications associated with it remain. Now, the ability to solve this problem most often was overcome through stent retrieval, but actually that requires use of devices we may be very unfamiliar with, such as a gooseneck snare. And so it's maybe through simulation-based learning that we can gain greater confidence in how to overcome these complications moving forwards. And I'll share some data later uh, to, to justify that statement. Now, moving from device to procedural complication, this data from the UK BSIS audit highlights that coronary dissection is by far and away the commonest occurrence, followed by slow flow, no flow, seen most commonly with acute coronary syndrome. But actually coronary perforation does occur on a, on a fairly uh, regular basis. And this analysis by Tim Kinnaird, again, working with the BSIS audit, highlights actually an increasing mortality associated with perforation. And we see actually that the increasing complexity of the work that we're undertaking means that perforation is something we're more likely to encounter. So again, understanding how to both avoid and then also overcome these complications becomes really important. Now, this is a snapshot video recording of Sensei Sumatsuji uh, using simulation-based learning to great effect. It happens on the <laughs> Yeah, we do that. Wow. 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 Please. Tell me that. Okay. Yeah, and then after the lab check confirmed, we do rapidly inflate balloon again. There is a fast initial sealing, and then check the dye injection. So he can laugh, but ultimately, this left hand panel of a patient of mine where I, I very nearly lost her, it is an incredibly stressful environment and one that you, know, you don't want to be encountering new techniques for the first time in such a critical position. So the opportunity to use this simulation based silicon model developed by Terumo Pranex is invaluable to ensure actually better outcomes for our patients moving forwards. So simulation based learning works upon this theory of having a base of knowledge moving forwards with developing competence, demonstrating performance and ultimately being able to act. And so this enhancement of our performance and confidence in action is fundamental. As I've already highlighted, we've been working with this successful collaboration for four or five years now, initially led by Olivia Muller, and I very 
uh, fortunately taken on this program over the last couple of years. This year and last, having six stations in a dedicated room at PCR. And to date, we've had just under 500 participants, many of which have had fairly significant experience in their practice. We see that stent loss is actually a complication that they've encountered in two thirds, but their confidence in overcoming this uh, complication was actually only seen in about half the cohort, but significantly impacted by this educational uh, program. Last year, we developed a new program of, of working with distal perforation, more frequently encountered by our colleagues, but actually we saw even less confidence in how to overcome this and again have enhanced their confidence, although we're working still with Pranex to further develop this program to enhance their confidence further. Last year, through collaboration with a colleague, Vani Mahadavan in Portsmouth and Pranex, uh, we also surveyed uh, the, uh, those involved on their experience of human factors. And quite concerningly, actually, we see that less than 20% are using a daily briefing for their team or have dedicated algorithms, protocols for emergency work. Concerningly, we see more than 40% actually reporting that they don't have confidence in their team during bailout scenarios. And most concerningly, that 40% can't actually call on colleagues for help, which is something we would want to work upon. And then one in five don't actually know where to locate emergency equipment, so potentially exposing their patients to really uh, very significant risk. So what next? Well, we're wanting to use this complications in the cath lab simulation based learning as an opportunity to capture both uh, the, the existing experience, but then also the impact that SBL can achieve. So this year at PCR, we have uh, Sensei Sumitsuji on Tuesday the 16th, working alongside myself and Margaret McIntaggart to simulate type three and type five perforation and demonstrate the techniques that we can use to overcome it. So please join us. And then throughout the program, we have the opportunity for you to have hands-on simulation-based learning in stent dislodgement and distal perforation. It's on a first come first serve basis. So please do attend uh, at these times and we really look forward to engaging with you. And then lastly, this QR code will link you to, I think, a really important survey for us to capture your experience. And then we would really like to work with you in the next six to 12 months to further evaluate the impact of either exposure to this learning program or not in how you overcome uh, complications in, in the time moving forwards. I really thank you for your attention and look forward to seeing you in Paris.